At this very moment, there are hundreds of U.S. Navy ships patrolling the world's oceans, ready to respond to any crisis within hours. Today, we're diving into every major type of ship in America's naval arsenal, the vessels that keep enemies awake at night and America sleeping soundly while politicians debate foreign policy. So, grab your sea legs and let's explore how America projects democracy across 70% of the Earth's surface. Aircraft Carriers Nimitz-Class Nimitz-Class aircraft carriers are the crown jewels of the U.S. Navy. These are nuclear-powered supercarriers that displace over 100,000 tons and carry approximately 5,000 crew members. That's larger than most towns. But unlike most towns, this one moves at 30-plus knots and launches fighter jets off its roof. Building one of these bad boys only costs American taxpayers about $4.5 billion. Each Nimitz-class carrier operates about 90 aircraft, FA-18 Super Hornets, E-2 Hawkeyes for early warning, and various helicopters. The nuclear reactors provide virtually unlimited range and 20-plus years of operation without refueling. This means a carrier can operate anywhere in the world for months without needing to stop for gas, which is convenient when your job is to park 90 combat aircraft at a country's front door to say hello. The United States currently has 10 of these floating cities in active service. Gerald R. Ford Class Gerald R. Ford Class carriers are the newest and most advanced carriers, designed to operate for 50 years with improved efficiency and capabilities and carry a crew of approximately 4,500 personnel. The Ford class uses electromagnetic catapults instead of steam, advanced radar systems, and automation that reduces crew requirements by several hundred people. They're like the Nimitz class carriers, but with much better Wi-Fi and fewer sailors needed to operate the same capabilities. American citizens will be thrilled to know that all this muscle comes at a cool 13 billion per ship. That's three times more expensive compared to the Nimitz class. What an absolute bargain for spreading foreign policy across the globe. Submarines. Virginia class. Virginia class attack submarines are the hunters of the deep, nuclear-powered attack submarines designed to sink enemy ships, gather intelligence, and conduct special operations. Virginia class subs are 377 feet long, carry a crew of about 140, and can stay submerged for months, limited only by food supplies and the crew's tolerance for recycled air and each other. They're armed with torpedoes, Tomahawk cruise missiles, and the ability to deploy Navy SEALs through special chambers. Imagine a 7,000-ton killing machine that can sneak up on surface ships and submarines, launch missiles at land targets, and insert special operations teams, all while remaining completely invisible. All of this for the low, low price of over $5 billion. Officially, there are 23 of these submarines in active service. Ohio Class Ohio Class ballistic missile submarines are one of the most powerful weapons platforms ever created. Born out of the tense standoff of the Cold War, these subs were designed as the ultimate underwater leg of America's nuclear triad. Ensuring mutually assured destruction against Soviet aggression, and keeping the peace through sheer firepower. Each Ohio-class submarine carries 24 Trident two ballistic missiles, each capable of carrying multiple nuclear warheads. One submarine has more destructive power than was used in all of World War II combined. They carry a crew of approximately 155 personnel and operate on 70-day patrols, spending most of their time hiding in the deepest parts of the ocean where they can't be detected or tracked. The crew rotates between two complete teams, blue and gold crews, so the submarine can stay operational while one crew rests and trains. It's the ultimate game of hide-and-seek, except the stakes are nuclear deterrence and global stability. Ohio-class guided missile submarines. These submarines, which carry a crew of approximately 159 personnel, were converted from ballistic missile platforms to conventional cruise missile platforms. Each can carry 154 Tomahawk cruise missiles plus special operations capabilities. They're like strategic bombers that operate underwater and can strike targets hundreds of miles inland without anyone knowing they're there. The Ohio's originally cost roughly $2 billion, but inflation has today's price around double. According to official records, there are 18 Ohio-class subs lurking in the deep. Los Angeles and Seawolf-class 
Los Angeles and Seawolf-class submarines, which carry crews of approximately 140 personnel, are the older but still capable attack submarines that round out the force. Conceived during the height of the Cold War to counter advanced Soviet submarines, these vessels were designed to hunt and outmatch Russian underwater threats, tipping the scales of naval superiority in America's favor. The Seawolf is actually the most expensive sub of all time, with an inflation-adjusted cost of over $6 billion. In submarine warfare, quiet and deadly never goes out of style, even if your technology is from previous decades. Surface Combat Ships Arleigh Burke Class Arleigh Burke Class destroyers are the workhorse destroyers designed to do everything. Anti-air warfare, anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare, and ballistic missile defense. They're like the Swiss Army knife of naval warfare. If Swiss Army knives were 500 feet long, carried 323 personnel, and had missiles that could hit targets a thousand miles away, Burke class destroyers use the Aegis combat system, which can track hundreds of targets simultaneously and engage multiple threats at once. They're the reason why attacking U.S. Navy forces is considered a career ending move for potential adversaries. These destroyers cost roughly two billion each. Ticonderoga class. Ticonderoga class cruisers, which carry a crew of approximately 330, are guided missile cruisers that serve as the command ships for surface action groups and the primary air defense platforms for carrier strike groups. Developed in the 1970s amid fears of Soviet naval swarms, these cruisers introduced the revolutionary Aegis combat system, turning them into floating shields capable of tracking and neutralizing hundreds of incoming threats at once. Cruisers carry more missiles than destroyers and have enhanced command and control capabilities, making them like a destroyer's bigger, more experienced older brother who went to college and got a business degree. These cruisers originally cost one billion, which is about two billion in today's money when adjusted for inflation. Zumwalt class. Zumwalt class destroyers are the Navy's newest and most futuristic destroyers designed with stealth technology and advanced automation. These carry a crew of approximately 158, but only three were built because they turned out to be really expensive solutions to problems that other ships could solve more cheaply. It was like buying a Ferrari to commute to work. Impressive engineering, but maybe not the most practical choice. With research and development costs included, these cost a whopping eight billion each. Littoral Combat Ships Littoral combat ships, which carry a core crew of approximately 40 to 50 personnel plus mission modules, are smaller, faster ships that were designed for operations in coastal waters and shallow seas. They use modular mission packages that can be swapped out for different roles, anti-submarine, anti-surface, or mine countermeasures. While the concept was brilliant, the execution has been educational to say the least. They're proof that sometimes military innovation requires learning from expensive mistakes. The Freedom Class LCS looks like a traditional ship. However, the Independence Class LCS looks like someone challenged naval architects to design a ship using only triangles. The United States has 26 of these ships in service, each costing around half a billion each. Amphibious Warfare Ships America-class amphibious assault ships are basically small aircraft carriers designed to transport Marines and their equipment to hostile shores. They carry a crew of approximately 1,204 personnel and operate helicopters, tilt rotor aircraft, and occasionally F-35B Lightning II fighters. These $4 billion floating bases project Marine power ashore while providing air support and logistics. WASP-class WASP-class amphibious assault ships, which carry a crew of approximately 1,070 personnel, are similar to America-class, but with well decks that can launch landing craft. They're like a cheaper, smaller combination aircraft carrier and transport ship designed to deliver Marines to beaches that may not be expecting visitors. San Antonio-class San Antonio-class amphibious transport docks, which carry a crew of approximately 360 personnel, are ships that transport Marines, their vehicles, and landing craft. They have well decks that can be flooded to launch amphibious vehicles and landing craft. Think of them as $2 billion garage doors that open directly into the ocean, 
except the garage contains tanks and the ocean might contain people shooting at you. Dock Landing Ships Dock landing ships are specialized ships designed to transport and launch landing craft and amphibious vehicles. These carry a crew of approximately 413 personnel and are the naval equivalent of a parking garage. If parking garages could flood themselves and launch their contents directly onto hostile beaches. Expeditionary Sea Base Expeditionary sea bases, which carry a crew of approximately 250 personnel, are floating platforms that provide logistics, support, and staging areas for operations. They're like mobile bases that can be positioned wherever Marines need sustained support for extended operations. Support and Auxiliary Ships Supply Class Supply Class Fast Combat Support Ships are ships that keep the fleet fed, fueled, and armed during extended operations. They carry a crew of approximately 219 personnel and can replenish multiple ships simultaneously while underway, transferring fuel, food, ammunition, and parts via cables and helicopters. Henry J. Kaiser Class Henry J. Kaiser Class Fleet Replenishment Oilers, which carry a crew of approximately 124 personnel, are tankers that provide fuel to naval forces worldwide. They're proof that even the most advanced military technology still depends on having enough gas to get where you're going. Lewis and Clark Class Lewis and Clark Class dry cargo ships are ammunition and supply ships that carry everything from missiles to coffee filters and carry a crew of approximately 135 personnel. They're the Walmart of naval operations. They have everything you need, but finding it requires patience and possibly divine intervention. Expeditionary Fast Transport these are high-speed catamaran hull ships designed for rapid transport in shallow waters and carry a crew of approximately 42 personnel. They're almost like a speedboat of military transport if speedboats were 300 feet long and could carry tanks. Hospital ships Hospital ships, like the USNS Mercy and USNS Comfort, are floating hospitals that provide medical care during humanitarian operations and combat and carry a crew of approximately 1,200 personnel when fully activated. They're converted oil tankers that now contain some of the most advanced medical facilities in the world. Specialized and unique vessels. Cyclone class. Cyclone class patrol coastals are small, fast patrol boats operated by the Navy and often deployed overseas for coastal patrol and special operations support. They're like the sports cars of naval warfare. Fast, maneuverable, and perfect for missions that don't require bringing a massive destroyer to solve a small problem. These carry a crew of approximately 28 personnel. Avenger Class Avenger Class mine countermeasure ships are specialized ships designed to find and neutralize naval mines and carry a crew of approximately 84 personnel. They use wooden hulls and non-magnetic components to avoid triggering the mines they're hunting. It's one of the few places in the modern military where wood is still the high-tech solution. Pathfinder Class Pathfinder Class survey ships are ships that map the ocean floor and update nautical charts and carry a crew of approximately 88 personnel. They're proof that even in the age of GPS, someone still needs to know exactly how deep the water is and where the rocks are hiding. Command Ships Command ships, which carry a crew of approximately 842 personnel, are specialized vessels that serve as floating headquarters for major operations. They're packed with communications equipment and command facilities that allow admirals to control operations across entire ocean regions. Coast Guard Cutters Yes, the Coast Guard counts too, because they're technically military ships, even if they spend most of their time rescuing weekend warriors who thought they could navigate by iPhone. The Coast Guard usually operates under the Department of Homeland Security but becomes part of the Navy during wartime, so they get their spot on the list. Legend Class Legend Class National Security Cutters are the largest Coast Guard vessels designed for extended patrols in distant waters. They conduct drug interdiction, search and rescue, and fisheries enforcement, and carry a crew of approximately 120 personnel. They're like police cruisers. If police cruisers were 400 feet long and operated thousands of miles from the closest backup. Sentinel Class Sentinel Class fast response cutters are smaller patrol vessels for coastal operations and carry a crew of approximately 24 personnel. 
They're the workhorses of Coast Guard operations, handling everything from search and rescue to immigration enforcement to removing drunk boaters from situations they probably shouldn't have gotten into in the first place. Polar Class Polar Class icebreakers are specialized ships designed to operate in Arctic conditions and break through sea ice. They're proof that American engineering can create ships tough enough to ram through ice formations that would sink normal vessels. These billion-dollar ships carry a crew of approximately 186 personnel. However, they spend most of their time doing research and occasional rescue operations. From the massive nuclear carriers that serve as floating air bases to specialized vessels that clear mines and map ocean floors, the U.S. Navy operates the most diverse and capable fleet in history. The next time you see news about naval deployments, you'll know the difference between sending a destroyer versus sending a carrier strike group and why that difference matters. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more military and history content. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.